Hi, welcome, Terry Vanover. I'm a divorce strategist. I can help you come through your divorce without being legally, financially, and emotionally devastated, but just as importantly, help you to heal from a toxic relationship so that you can transition confidently into that next chapter and feel good about yourself and know that you're making a healthy, happy new relationship. So we're coming up on the holidays, right? And so I know I've got a couple of questions here regarding how do you handle being without your kids during the holidays? How do you get back into the dating scene if you've been out of it for 30 plus years, 35 years, I think this person is, is uh, divorcing after 34 years of marriage. So we're gonna talk about all of those topics, right? So, so I'm, I'm Terry. I went through a really devastating divorce myself. It was two and a half years, um, two failed mediations, two attorneys, uh, tens of thousands of dollars down the tubes. And um, in addition to that, I, I lost my home because of the financial mistakes I, I made because I was just so kind of emotionally overwhelmed through everything that I was going through. I didn't make very good rational decisions, especially financially or legally at all. And, uh, you know, so I was homeless for a time and lost my home and lost my mom at, at, at that time. I was hit by a van while riding my bike. So I had, you know, all these uh, surgeries following um, the accident. And it was just like, man, one thing after the other, it was just like a horrible four month span that just never seemed to end, right? And um, so I know how devastating this time can be. And you need all the support and help and resources that you can, can to get through this time so that you know you can look back at this horrible time and know that you made the best decisions that you could at that time. So, you know, I wish I wish I could say that <laughs> and I, I cannot. And so I came through it and I decided I wanted to help other people come through this time and not make the mistakes that, that I personally made, but so many people I know make and so many people that are going through divorce, they make these mistakes and you wanna feel that, that you're making the best decisions during this time. So, you know, I help my clients with resources and knowledge and the right questions and, you know, the right people, because this, this is gonna take its um, hold on you in every, uh, dimension of your life. So you need to have the right team with you to help you during this time. And so I help people work through that. And not only that, though, I learned how to heal like my own issues that I brought into the marriage that led to the divorce in the first place. So not only are you, you know, knowing that you're going through this with, with the right resources and the right people, but you're also gonna be getting specific tools and specific strategies to help you heal from, from childhood trauma and from, from relationships that have left you second guessing yourself, you know, uh, you know, being a people pleaser, never knowing if you're the right thing, feeling like a failure, feeling so much shame and doubt about yourself. So that's what I do. So I'm glad to have you here today. We're gonna to talk about well, what if you are not going to get to be with your kids during the holidays? I know in, in the autumn and the winter time, it, you know, it becomes more difficult for people who are going through divorce because it's, it's so much coming up at them. And, and if you've got, you know, custody arrangements that are temporary or not, um, not in place yet, right? It leaves you with so much doubt and so much questioning yourself and you're feeling lonely too. So what do you do if you are away from your children? Well, the first, the first thing that you wanna do in, in getting through this time is self-care, right? I, I know I sound like a broken record when it comes to that, but it is really the priority. And particularly women, forget to put their own needs first. And, you know, we have, you know, especially if you're a people pleaser and you want to say yes to everyone, not good, right? You need to put up some boundaries and you need to say no and you need to prioritize what you need. And when we talk about self-care, I think there's also 
it's a buzzword right now. And I don't think people really know what, what it means when I talk about self-care. Self-care is not about taking bubble baths and reading books. Although if that gives you the nurture for your soul, great. Doesn't for me, that, that doesn't necessarily help me, but I look at it as what, what is it that keeps you grounded? What practices can you put into place consistently that help you alleviate anxiety and that keep you grounded? You know, for me, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of meditation. It has been life-changing for me. So when times have been challenging for me during this pandemic, I've actually put in some intentional time to, to do meditation more often, or, or at least at least take a break from the day-to-day stuff, right? It might be, okay, at four o'clock in the afternoon, I'm going to go I get out of the house, take a walk, you know? So intentionally setting some time to prioritize your needs. And again, saying no, no is a complete sentence. <laughs> I say that all the time. No is a complete sentence. It's also a sentence of love, right? When we tell our toddlers who is moving towards the burning stove, right? We say no, that's an act of love. So if you can reframe how you think about no as a negative into something that's positive, it's, a, it's an act of self-love for yourself. So um, that's, that's the first thing is, is find the practice and put some intentional practice in there that will keep you grounded and alleviate your anxiety. For me, it's, it's definitely working out. It's definitely getting back in nature. I, I, I've been taking a lot more walks um, to a nearby lake near us. Meditation, rest, um, putting some time you know, aside for the things that bring me joy. Music is another big one that I think we don't use enough. So figure out what it is that brings you the grounding that you need. I listen to a lot of audiobooks, a lot of podcasts of uplifting people and people to keep me grounded so that I don't get in my own head and go down the rabbit hole of negativity. So sometimes we need someone else to like pull us back. So whatever it is that you need to keep you grounded. And then practicing gratitude. So maybe you can't be with your children on um the day that you want them, right? Maybe Christmas Eve is your tradition where you do a big Christmas Eve feast or whatever it is for you, whatever your tradition is, or maybe it's the start of Hanukkah and you that's always a big deal for you. Um, but practicing gratitude for what you do have is really, really significant. That's another kind of buzzword that I'm hearing a lot. And, you know, I have to say, I don't think I kind of was like, eh, gratitude, what does that mean? But you know what, the, the more I did it consistently, because now in my journal that I share with my clients, I have this um, journaling activity where I do five things every morning, well, three things in the morning and two things at night, where, um, and one of them is practice the, the gratitude. I'll tell you, it, it not only has like shifted how my mindset starts in the morning, but throughout the day, I'm looking for those things to be grateful for that I could write the next day. So again, it's like meditation. It, when it became a practice for me is when I saw the difference in my life. So practicing the gratitude every single day and, and hey, are your kids healthy? Maybe they can't be there, but my, my kid is healthy. My kid is happy. Um, maybe you wish they were going to school because remote learning is very challenging, but hey, I'm going to be grateful for this extra time that I get to be with them. Or I'm grateful that, you know, we have a roof over our heads and, and you know, we're in a warm home during this cold season. Like, so, but I would even ask you and invite you to look for those micro, those micro, uh, I call them micro miracles, but the little things that, that occur that like seem like miracles. Um, uh, you know, my husband was sick with, with COVID and this was one of my miracles and this brought that gratitude up for me too. And my son um, came back, right? Cause he was quarantined for a long time and he gave him a big hug. He gave his stepdad a big hug and he goes, oh man, it just feels so good to hug you again. And I was like, I just want to cry just thinking about it. I was like, oh my God, this like, it's, it was a mirror, you know, kind of like a miracle, but also I felt really a lot of gratitude that my son 
was able to express that and like he saw it and he was grateful to be with his stepdad and have that hug. I was just, oh, it was so sweet. It was so sweet. So practicing the gratitude for what you do have would shift your mindset. So you're not always looking for the negatives. You're not always looking for the bad things that are occurring. You're looking for the good things. Our, um, our minds focus on what we put our attention to. So the more good things you think about, the more you're going to find them. That's the miracle there. And don't get caught up on dates. So this one is really interesting because I think we as adults get caught up on dates. But for me, this was a really easy transition for me post-divorce because for me around the holidays, we were always traveling when I was married, we were always traveling back to um, back East. And so Christmas day never really happened on Christmas day, you know, because we were either with family or we were doing, you know, da, 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 we were traveling or whatever. So it never became a big deal, like where we were, right. Because we had to be flexible because, you know, um, some nights, you know, we were at, you know, my parents, we might be at um, my husband's family. So it was just whenever we got there, like, so <laughs> Christmas was whenever, and I'll tell you, the kids never minded. They don't care. They really don't care. They just want a happy, healthy parent. They just want you to be present and, and to be okay. That's mm -hmm. the greatest gift that you can give to them. So so don't get caught up on the dates, right? So if um, you can't be with your child on Christmas Eve and that's like traditionally been a big night for you, do it the night before, do it the weekend before, do it the weekend after, whenever you are, they don't care. They really don't. They just want to be with you. And, and if you can create some new traditions, this, this is the perfect opportunity to do something you've always wanted to do. Maybe you've always wanted to do a pajama night or a pajama day and you stay in your pajamas and you cook cookies all day and you decorate or gingerbread house or whatever the tradition is, right? Or if you're in the fall and, um, and maybe you can't do Thanksgiving dinner on the Thursday, but if you want to do one on Friday or do Thanksgiving pizza night on Friday night and do something fun, it, it doesn't matter. It's all about, I think we forget it's about the time together with our kids and with our family, right? That's what counts. It doesn't matter the date. The date is arbitrary. And, uh, you know, if, 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 if you traditionally, you know, you're not going to get the trick or treat with your child, come up with something else where you, you know, paint pumpkins together or carve pumpkins together. Like, it's okay to start these new traditions and they don't have to be on the date that, that the calendar says it is. It's, there's all kinds of new fun activities that you can do with your kids. It's just about being with your kids. And um, so self-care, creating the new traditions, not getting hung up on the dates, right? And then practicing the gratitude. So I'm gonna stop here and just take a breath, take a moment. If anyone has a question and you wanna type it in. Otherwise, I do have another question from someone regarding dating, which is, a favorite topic of mine. I, I love talking about dating because I think um, the people that we meet, you know, the universe sends people to us to show us the places where we still have to heal, places where we need to grow. And, and dating is definitely one of those challenging scenarios in our, in our lives where it presents us with new opportunities and new people to show us well, we still have places when within us to feel to, to, to heal, right? When does it not feel sad to say goodbye? Okay, it's been two years. How to be okay? Okay, so if you're still sad with saying goodbye to to your child, I'm I'm wondering if there's some resistance there. Like lean into that and lean into that sadness and get curious about like what's this sadness about? Is it, is it some deep-seated abandonment issues that I need to look at within myself or feeling rejected? I, I sense that there's probably something deeper there within that question. So I would, I would ask you not to resist that or like to make that because the more we resist or push something away, the more it surrounds us, right? 
But if we lean into it or we consciously surrender to it and we say, I'm feeling sad, like, what is this about? What is this showing me? What is this trying to teach me? I, I bet it, it's a deep seated root within you where you need to look at maybe some feelings of abandonment, feelings of rejection. Maybe you're projecting when your mom and dad divorced and you're feeling abandoned, right? And you're projecting that onto your child even. So those feelings of sadness, rather than pushing them away or feeling like I should not feel this way, um, at, get, get curious, surrender to it, consciously surrender and, and ask like, what is this about? What is this revealing to me? What do I need to do? Get into that meditative space and, and ask, like, what is, this, what is this trying to tell me? Where do I need to look within myself? I believe that everything, all these feelings, everything that comes up, it's, it's there as an opportunity for us to grow as, as people. So great question, by the way. Great question. I love that, that like, I, you know, it's been two years. I shouldn't, you know, who says there's a time limit on our sadness? Who says there's a time limit on right? Acceptance is a big part of this. Accept what is. Oh, um, and I, I think I've told this story before about um, loneliness. Was it last summer? I was like just experiencing this loneliness. And I was like so wrapped into the like, well, I shouldn't feel lonely. There's no reason for me to feel lonely. I don't feel like, what is this loneliness about? And I just got so caught up in feeling like I should not feel lonely and like, why am I lonely that I, you know, was, was when I just finally just surrendered and said, Oh, okay. I just feel lonely. And then the amazing, then it just dissipated. It was all that resistance around it. That was actually causing more of the loneliness. And then when I just accepted it and embraced it and okay, I just feel lonely. And then the amazing thing was like once I just surrendered to it, it actually, and actually that was all it needed was to release. So great question. All right. And so the other question I had here that I'll answer is um, a gentleman asked, he's been married for 34 years uh, and he's, it sounded like from this post, he's in, in fear of entering the dating scene. Like there was, I also noticed that there was some judgment about feeling like a failure, feeling like, you know, this shouldn't have happened, you know, 34 years or 34 years wasted. Now, what do I do? Now I have to date again. So there's a lot of judgment in this question. And so I would invite you to accept what is, right? Like accept that, you know, actually, and actually 34 years is a beautiful thing. Most people don't reach that milestone. And so accept that it is what it is, that this relationship had served its purpose, it had run its course. And, and the sooner you get to acceptance and embracing what is, the sooner you'll get to happiness as well. So acceptance is a big part of it, but also I know that it's difficult in, um, in when you're dating to, one of the things that I tell my clients and tell the people that work with in my programs about dating is just to be careful as you're dating that you don't get caught up in the feelings that someone gets to you. Um, what often happens is that people will date someone and that person makes them feel a certain way and then what happens is they minimize some of the red flags they see or they ignore the red flags and they end up in a, in a unhealthy relationship because they haven't really taken the time to, to, I always say, don't stay with someone based on how that person makes you feel, right? Although, I mean, you should be with someone that makes you feel good about yourself. I'm not saying that, but make sure that you're, looking at as you're dating someone that you're looking at how their words and their actions match so you want to be basing relationships and and partnerships based on does this person's actions match with what they say do their words match what they do so oftentimes 
when I'm talking with clients, it's pretty apparent that, and I also say that people show you who they are early on. We just tend to dismiss that and minimize that. So when people show you who they are, believe them, right? When, when you, you see someone who's disrespectful to, to people and disrespectful to your time or doesn't fulfill obligations when they say they will, believe them, right? They're showing you who they are. Don't come up with excuses. Don't minimize it like, oh, okay, that person is showing me who they are. Um, not a good person to be in partnership with. So when I talk about how someone makes you feel, I, I use the example of a client that I had and she was in the dating, dating scene and she was dating this guy. And, you know, during our conversation, she had started to have some red flags with him. And it was very interesting because, you know, she'd say, yeah, this, this isn't working. And I noticed a couple of weeks into our work together, like she still hadn't, you know, been honest with him and said, uh, you know, I want to break up with you. This isn't working, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I was, got really curious and said, what's, what's going on with this? I thought that, you know, you had determined that what had happened was his actions didn't meet his words because she had, you know, a very specific boundary that she needed someone that was able to commit time to her and be committed to the time um, of seeing her once, twice a week, something like that. Clear boundary. And I'm all for that. If that's, that's what you need and that's what you want, you know, go for it. But he was backing out on dates. He was not showing up. He was, you know, last minute, you know, not showing up to the dates or whatever, or coming up with excuses not to, I'm too busy this week, blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, he's pretty clearly, his actions don't meet his words because that was one of the things, you know, she's like, I need someone that can devote some time and be in a committed relationship and blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh yeah, I'm, I'm that way and da, 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 da. And yet his actions were not meeting his words. And when we got into the sessions, um, you know, it was how he made her feel when they were together, when they were together, right? She was hanging on those times when they were together, when they were together, he made her feel really accepted and really comfortable and at ease. And here's the thing, this went back to her childhood trauma of not being accepted in her own family. She never felt comfortable in her own family. She always had to be a certain way with her family. But with this guy, she could be herself. She felt very comfortable, very relaxed. She could be her, her authentic self. But here's the thing, she needs to get to that herself. And so that was the work that we were doing about accepting herself and being comfortable in who she is and presenting herself to the world as she is versus pretending she's something she's not, the way she was raised in her family. And he made her feel very comfortable in those times together. And so that's what I mean by judge people by their actions and their words versus how they make you feel because he was making her feel very comfortable, but the truth was he's not following through on his actions, his words, he was not true to his word. And so she was minimizing the red flag and looking forward to those few times when he did show up on those dates because he felt, he felt very comfortable to be around. But that's not someone that you want to have a partnership if you can't rely on them, if they're not dependable, if they don't keep their word. So it's really important that, that we not minimize when people show us who they are, when we don't, that we don't um, dismiss those red flags. It's, it's, it's there. People show us who they are. It's up to us to believe it, right? So that's really important. So look, embrace this, this accept that you've had 34 years together. Love it, embrace it, be grateful for it, be grateful for every moment. That's beautiful, right? And accept that it has run its course and that you're ready to move on. Or if you are ready to move on, it's time to like, do the work, do the process to get ready to move on so that you can date and you can date in a healthy new way, right? Because you want to choose a partner that is aligned with you and that does meet your, your, your boundaries and is willing to give you what you need in a relationship. So, so that's what I have. So look, we went into depth on how to have five coping strategies if you're going to be away from your child 
for the holidays. So if you haven't checked out the workshop, I would highly, highly, highly recommend the workshop. Not only in that, but I had um, one of my clients commented that the journal was one of the best tools that she got in my program. And I have to say, not to toot my horn a little bit here, but I rewrote a journal and the journal's even better. So you get the journal when you when you get the link to the workshop. So not only are you getting this great workshop with uh, lots of strategies, but you're getting a healing journal as well to help you as you're going through the holidays. So you definitely don't want to miss that. So, all right. I'm so looking forward to, to you checking out the workshop. And if you need anything, you can certainly feel free to message me. I'm here for you. I want to give you all the support and love that I can. I'm looking forward to seeing you. All right. All right. Bye-bye.